Oh, what's up, guys? Well, I figured I'd show you the haul that I got here for December. It's a few VHS tapes, some DVDs, and I found a ton of comic books that were all anywhere from 30 cents, uh, 35 cents, 40 cents, uh, maybe three or four or 50 cents, and then a couple were 70 cents. Uh, the place where I got the uh, comic books. I don't, there's bound to be a rhyme or reason, but apparently they have their entire stock of like, there's got to be seriously close to 100 comic book boxes, and they've got them all in a computer, and the computer automatically apparently uh, puts discounts on them as time goes by. And here we are at the end of the year. This is the place where it was all the comics, just about all the comics for 50 cents, and now they're down to 30 cents. If you were 40 cents because they're a dollar or two more. But anyway... Getting right into it, but uh, what we have here is I found the VHS tape of uh, the musical Hair. Um, you know, saw this when I was a kid. Showed it to my son about three years ago uh, when he still came over and visited and stuff. And all he said was, you know, hippies are weird. I just wanted to see what his reaction was and stuff. But uh, some great stuff in here, you know. Really, uh, this movie came out in '79. It's a play that uh, you know was really about the Vietnam War and. and the age of Aquarius there and stuff like that so it's kind of like a uh, little taste of the counterculture at the time and stuff and just has an ending that just kind of tears you up if you make it all the way through and for you guys there that just don't feel like having like you know a touching moment man it's uh, Beverly D'Angelo whose boobs are in it so there you go all right and then I got this this is something that I've been trying to get the DVD of off and on for years now uh, I actually go to a website that is hosted by Gary Larson and you know they're always sold out um, I have a VHS tape of the first TV special which I think came on in 1993 almost 20 years uh, I've actually re-recorded the uh, VHS, original VHS tape to another one just so I don't get that tape rot but I found this on um, eBay for practically nothing uh, Tales from the Dark Far Side Part 2 the first one was on CBS and then for some reason it took this one. This one came out around 98, I think. And it took two years for him to get it. It's 16 different vintage uh, little scenes written by Gary Larson. And it actually has a live action part in it. And if you're a fan of the Far Side comic strip, this is right up your alley. And uh, I think this thing never really came on TV that I'm aware of. And it's also on DVD, but like I said, the DVDs are always sold out. And I never really find them on eBay because apparently when people buy them, they don't give them up. But what is so funny is right after I uh, ordered this on eBay, I tried one more time on uh, YouTube to look up the Far Side Specials, and somebody had uploaded them about two months ago. So, you know, playing around on uh, YouTube since about 2008, 2009, and they just now pop up on YouTube. Who knows how long they'll be up. So it was really cool to see get this. Really great stuff. And this one is so dark. That first one was made for TV, you know, CBS primetime and stuff. And it's funny, don't get me wrong. It still, you know, has zombies and brains and it's funny. But this one, holy crap, man. I mean, it starts out with uh, the running gag is people getting their heads crushed by elephants, you know. And there's some dark, twisted stuff in this. All right. Then I got some used DVDs. I don't think this is going to blow, blow anybody away. Uh, all but one of these movies I've owned. About two, three years ago, I really got strapped for cash, and I sold a ton of DVDs. You know, got, gosh, plus $300 and stuff for what I sold and stuff. So, over the past year or two, I've been getting back what I sold. Uh, Superman 2, I had the Richard Donner cut, and I still have this on VHS, but uh, the Richard Donner cut is phenomenal, but this is still a good, good movie on its own, okay? Uh, Superman 2, I think this came out in eighty. Uh, this was filmed, most of this was filmed the same time as they were doing the original Superman movie. So it's kind of got like this, it, it, it flows really well, still has the same tone as the first movie. So it's really good. And this is where we got the, you know, the three Kryptonians, you know, led by Zod and going after, you know, Superman on Earth. Just some great scenes. And it's got the great Terrence Stamp in it, you know, just a great actor. I got this, I've owned this before. This is Seven, this is one of my favorite movies ever. And uh, it blew my mind because, like I said, I've owned this before. And then I bought this copy. I got all these used. If you got, I don't know, two two movies, you got a third one free. Three used movies, you got the fourth one for free. But anyway, but this one, it was a two-sided disc, which I thought was all right. But when I was watching the movie, it gets halfway through the movie, and you have to flip the disc over. So this has got to be an early, early DVD, you know. Uh, and it's in such phenomenal shape and stuff. You know, it doesn't look that old. Um... 
I don't know. I don't know. I see the year of the movie, but I don't see the year this DVD came out. So I was really, you know, I'll be getting that again. Uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, if you're a Gary Oldman fan, this is from 1994. It's called Immortal Beloved, and it's Beethoven. And Gary Oldman is just a phenomenal actor. This is the one that made me really, you know, get into Gary Oldman there for a while because basically Beethoven is dying, and he has a man that has the title of secretary. And uh, his family shows up wanting his fortune. You know, and Beethoven got really mean and nasty there towards the end of his years because he was deaf, yet he wrote Ode to Joy, you know, the symphony. Uh, I don't remember what the actual title is, but we refer to it as Ode to Joy. And he writes this letter saying that he gives everything to his life, his love, you know, his immortal beloved. And the secretary font goes out to solve this mystery, who is the immortal beloved of Beethoven. And uh, I hope I got that right. I'm sitting here saying, yeah, it's Ludwig van Beethoven. And it comes down to three women, and you learn more about Beethoven in flashbacks as they remember what was going on around them. It's an excellent period piece. It is so good. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so, so good. All right. And I'm getting these back. All needs two towers. Nothing phenomenal here. Phenomenal here. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, uh, the four-disc set with the extended scenes. And I, I have the Return of the King up there. Um... And you know what? It's it's the movie's 13 years old. And I'm not gonna lie. I was watching this. It doesn't have the same oomph. And Fellowship of the Rings is one of my favorite stories. So, you know, maybe we'll see how those age and stuff. Okay. Then I got this for seven bucks. Those are all the used ones, but I got this for seven bucks. Okay. This is Wanted, a special edition. It comes in a case that comes with a bullet hole in it, as you can see. And I don't know if you can see it, but the actual CD case here. It has a cloth around it, and in the movie, the they find out the assassins find out who they're supposed to kill according to fate through knots that pop up in a loom. The loom is constantly going, and it's bringing out this fabric. And if you look real close at it, and it's not going to show up, but they actually have the this this thing is actually textures as cloth, and it's got uh, you know it's got the language on it from the movie, which was cool. And uh, this thing comes with extended scenes, Art of the Impossible cast of characters, stunts, groundbreaking visual effects, uh, the origins of Wanted, bringing the graphic novel to life, uh, the motion comic of Wanted, uh, a bunch of other stuff, and I'm sitting here like, okay, is the movie in it? And it's really cool, since we're all here, looks like it's going to be one of those videos, man, but the bullet hole, hole goes in there, and the DVDs look like targets, and they're just barely in there, I can hear all kinds of stuff in there, but I thought that was really cool to find. And I'll just put that up later. It's not complicated. I just need to move on. So I really, I really like that movie Wanted. So uh, that director did something else. I couldn't believe, but uh, you know, it was not a bad. You know, I didn't read the comics, so I don't know how faithful this is comic edition and stuff. Okay. So then we come down to the comics. We're finally to the comics here. Okay, guys. And for you guys that um, you know drink the Kool Aid of the naysayers, this place actually gave. Uh, receipts and as you can see if it's going to show up uh, the lighting's terrible man i switched to two new light bulbs trying something new and it's just not showing up right those are all 30 40 cents 30 cents 40 cents and here's the other one i went back twice and after i went to a few other stores and didn't buy anything i went back to get what i didn't get the first time all right so there you go how that's the how or hustle in effect all right, so I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna go with the good stuff first, because uh, I've hit this place off and on for two years, and I'm finally. I think I'm down to like maybe one more trip to getting everything I want. But the first thing that popped up were I got these uh, variant issues for 70 cents. These are variant covers, uh, and most of them probably aren't worth more than four bucks, but that's all right. First one is my favorite one. I'm just in love with this cover. Okay, we're actually gonna take a minute. This is from, uh, this is right before Flashpoint, okay? This is the Jeff Johns uh, Flash series written by him. And this is the Darwin Cook variant copy. And I absolutely love this cover, man. You know, we have the use of colors. You know, it's a very, it's a very retro, uh, nostalgic piece, okay? And, you know, the colors, the way it's colored, there's no lines. It's all color. The use of the cover, we have, uh, get it in there. Okay, yeah, I like how he, he uh, as Flash is running, he's got his foot right on the edge of the comic, didn't waste any space. 
even has some of that Silver Age um, dialogue in there. It's got the science police ships coming after Professor Zoom, the reverse flash there. Uh, just, I just love this cover. There's no black lines, like I said. It's all color, gray tones. Oh, it's just that's just fantastic. I love that cover. Oh, Darwin Cook is just, I love his stuff. All right, some more, um, and here's some more. We got some Brightest Day variants. Uh, you know, I have the entire Brightest Day series, but these, like I said, these are the uh, variant covers that I got for 70 cents a piece, number nine. And usually, number 11, I'm not into variant comics, but if I can get them this cheap. So I think these are like 1 in 10, 12, a lot of Martian Manhunter stuff. Great, uh, great little cover there. 13, I hope these are showing up. Great Dead Man with the uh, Batman spotlight on it that's going back to, looks like a little homage to uh, Neil Adams there. Okay, and then Martin, Martian Gothic, I thought that was a little, that's, that's kind of funny, a little rip on American Gothic. And this was interesting, this is from Avatar Press, this was a miniseries called No Hero. And they had a couple issues there, but I just grabbed this one because this is a variant cover. And it says right here on the cover, this is limited to 2,000 comics. So supposedly this big mock-up of Spider-Man number one by McFarlane, um, He's on a, uh, as you can see, instead of webs, it's barbed wire and it's a chain link fence. But, um, you know, apparently there's only 2,000 of these according to this. And I think it's only worth four bucks, if anything. But I figure why not I was there. Okay, and then a bunch of these books are 30 cents. Uh, I probably already had this one, but this this is kind of a key issue because this kind of gives you a hint that uh, Flashpoint was coming with the return of uh, Professor Zoom, Flash number eight. This follows the variant cover I showed you. Scott Collins in there. Jeff Johns and Scott Collins is a very underrated artist, man. He is so hit or miss. And when I say hit or miss, I don't mean you look at something and, you know, if it's not his greatest work, you're just kind of like, oh, that was satisfying. No, man. Either he knocks it out of the ballpark or he doesn't. He's really amazing. Uh, for 30 cents, I got the first Valiant issue of uh, Exo Man of War number one. Uh, this is what launched the company up the last year, probably a little bit over a year ago. Uh, I've been hearing great things. Kerry Nord does the art. Who I'm a fan of his stuff since he was on um, Conan number three. Yeah, I've got those for 40 cents. And I got this one. This is a Marvel one-shot. I haven't looked this up yet. But I'm hearing a lot about Scotty Young. Scotty Young is actually from Bristol. So that guy actually grew up about an hour past me and stuff. And I remember the first year that he was in comics, he was doing some Human Torch covers or something. And they showed up and they, they he was like acting all... Uh, all gangster just to tell you and he actually kind of made a fool of himself because right was like man you're from Bristol what are you doing and then word of mouth got around that some some editor or professional actually talked to him told him don't let it get to his head you know I don't I don't know what really got said and then when he did a return appearance where he signed up some comics and stuff they said he's just he was nice you know he was a nice guy he just kind of he lost the act and grew up you know so good for him but uh, this is Wolverine Deadpool the decoy with a Scotty Young cover that might go on eBay. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that kind of artwork. And then I had issue three of this. I, I don't know where I got it. Somebody, I think some girl I dated or something got me a stack of comics and it was in there. But uh, anyway, this, it was uh, oh, that's it. It was the Eternals that came out after the Neil Gaiman one. I think these came out in I want to say 2006. That doesn't sound right. They may be newer than that. I don't say year on them, but anyway, this is the Eternal series that came out a few years ago. That's a variant cover for number one. They had tons of these, so I'm wondering if it's 50-50, but here's the Eternals. I read number three and was pleasantly surprised. There's number two with Mercury on the cover, kissing somebody I haven't looked up yet. Uh, number five with a very dark side looking dude on there. Now, I think that is by design, you know. You know, this is a Kirby series. Love this cover, number six. Talk about rage. And then we have uh, number seven. They start bringing in the X-Men here in a minute. There we go. Uh, number eight. And there used to be a time where it was cool for the X-Men to pop up, but now when you throw in the X-Men and Wolverine and stuff, I, I think it's for sales. It's not a good sign. Uh, number nine. 
little cyclops coming in there and then an annual with a uh, Ed McGinnis is that his name cover so you know I think I I might have a, almost a full run of that little series but like I said I had number three here and flipped through it and read it and I'm like that wasn't bad that wasn't bad all right some other things and some of these things looked good while I was there I don't know I don't I, I'm tired of getting things and having to piecemeal it later but uh, I got Salvation Run number one came out way back when from understanding about the premise, a lot of people were telling me to buy this. They said it was really good. But the whole premise is that all the villains that were captured by the you know the DC Universe, they stuck them on a prison planet, and this is kind of them playing Lord of the Flies, you know, from what I get. I, don't, I can't imagine how savage they would get. But, you know, the problem with this is that I haven't even read it, and I can tell you Lex Luthor will come, on, come out on top, you know. But anyway, there's number one. Oh, well, I got this too. And I do plan on getting all of these. I've been looking for them. And the hard covers and the soft covers uh, are, I can't find them discounted. They're, they, they're quite a lot. But IDW and DC Comics got together and did Star Trek meets the Ver a Legion of Superheroes. And I have been wanting to read this. I flipped through this. It looks fantastic. It seems like it'd be a great story. Uh, I can just see Spock and Brainiac 5 getting along pleasantly, you know. You know, being glad to be around each other. Here's uh, number two of that. So that's awesome. I got some more of the Salvation, Salvation runs are here somewhere. I'm going to start trying to pick up Trinity. They're, they're popping up really cheap, but if they're in a white cover, if they're not in a bag, they look terrible. You know, even if I got them real cheap, I'm not paying that much for crap. But, uh, you know, here's uh, number 12. This was by Kurt This is, I think, is, I can't remember if this is weekly or bi weekly, but it was Mark Bagley and Kurt Buzak being the big two. Uh, number 11. But as a. It's supposed to be, it's, it's called Trinity because it's centered around Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. And I always assume this kind of happened because of uh, the whole year one event where they got took out, number nine. This eventually led to having the crime scene to get in it and, and all kinds of stuff. This is one of the series that just got bigger and bigger. Number seven. Number six. Number four. And all the covers, um, all covers ended up connecting. Um like so yeah and then the next one would connect and the next one connect and I think every now and then they would start all over and number two and those have been popping up here and there so okay so and then we got the 50th uh, issue of Superman Batman the Ethan Van Sky recover they had a ton of these and I kind of stuck them in a box and hid them there Everything I hid months ago, the last time I went, was still there right when I left it. So when I go back, I'll probably get a big run of these. And when I say big run, it's probably 15 to 20 issues. So I got issue 50 with the Deep Event Sky Recover. It uh, looks like it's got a lot of people in it, so we'll find out what happened there. Uh, put these in order, yeah. Dwayne McDuffie, uh, God rest, you know, he passed away a few years ago, but... Towards right at the end of the Justice League cartoons, he dove right back. Dwayne McDuffie was a big writer, big time writer on the old Justice League cartoons and stuff like that. And then when he, when the series kind of ended, I think they used a few of his scripts uh, for the directed DVD movies and stuff. And uh, he ended up jumping right back into comics. I remember he was getting Justice League, and I remember he was getting Fantastic Four. Then he went in for a surgery and he passed away. And this, this is one of the books he did there. He jumped. He followed uh, Brad Meltzer on Justice League of America and did a big Injustice story. And I remember everybody going nuts over because he just came off the Justice League cartoon. So you got to see him do that again. So here's 14 and 15. Yeah. So. And then I found this for 30 cents. Uh, Batman number 12. Seems like there's a character everybody thought might be a big key character popping up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and then I, I, like, I don't know. I got this. I've, I've had these and I've sold them and I got rid of them. But I got Batman number four, uh, Frank Miller, and Jim Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're halfway through, so let's hurry here. Uh, some of this stuff I got, continue with the Justice League. Uh, right before 52, they did a retroactive issues of a bunch of comics where they brought back teams from the Silver Age, uh, like on the Flash, and they did a couple of the Justice League ones, and... I don't know, I don't remember what all they did, but they were called retro issues. Seems like they did a Green Lantern too, and I don't know. 
but they came back and what they did is like you know they took a decade like they had them for the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and they consider this the 90s but this really should have been in the 80s but uh, they brought back Jane the Manny's Keith Given Kevin McGuire and even Terry Austin is in this and they did a retroactive Justice League America story and it also had kind of like a bookend for the end of breakdowns if you read the series the five-year run that those guys did on the series Kevin McGuire of course didn't do the whole series but K K the Mantis and Giffen did they had a story called breakdowns it was really intricate and it was just like everything that happened in five years came and hit them and really broke down the teams and stuff but anyway uh, and then with some DC 52 I've ended up owning like the first 13 issues of this twice so I figure I might as well get a couple just to keep and stop fighting it but uh, th these were this one was this one was 30 I think 30 or 40 cents, number nine, just the regular number nine, where Jim Lee came back. Uh, and then these, uh, these were 50 cents a piece. These are the, they have digital copies inside. These are the combo packs of number five, number seven, number eight, where Green uh, Arrow popped up. And that, that is such a throwback. I've, I've seen this cover a couple times on a few other volumes of Justice League. Number nine, that you I just showed you and then we're into the Doom Patrol and this was like about a 22-23 issue series I, I just need a handful now in the teens and stuff but this kind of was snuck under the radar this was a really good series but it was like I said under the radar and there's no doubt in my mind it got cancelled because of you know 52 coming stuff but Keith Giffen got on here and just went to town on the Doom Patrol he even had Ambush Book as a member and he really made them a little bit more freaky and stuff uh, it was just a real satisfying read. Really surprised me what Giffen did in some of this stuff. But there's number seven, number eight. Let's find some kind of demon dog. Yeah, number nine. You start getting the clues that there's something about Rita Farr that really does make her a freak. Uh, number eleven, number twelve, and number fourteen. Super Chief. That's kind of funny. So I think I need like 15 to uh, maybe 20. I don't know. Some odd numbers here and there. And then, uh, you know, I figured why not? I got some of these. I, my whole goal is to get these in trade. I've got the issue one. I got issue 50. Probably got about eight issues of this. But uh, and now these, I have the boys. But uh, what got me is that this is issue 13, a real early issue, man. This is some Garth Ennis's best stuff. And this character is... Uh, based on Simon Pegg <laughs> which Simon Pegg thought was really cool you know so there's 13 21 the boys is just a twisted read 37 you really get the idea that Garth Ennis does not like heroes this is one where he lets it fly uh, 43 mm, 45 46 47. I love this cover. A little making fun of the Dark Knight. It even has like a Batman looking character there. Come on. You know, getting kicked down while, you know. <laughs> it looks like Dark Knight Returns number one, and yeah, you get it. And 49, and this kind of cracks me up because they're action figures. Alright. I picked this up for 35 cents. This is Fatale by Ed Brubaker. I've seen a lot of people in their videos just loving this series or whatever it is. It, it kind of sounds like Film War meets Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft. So I got me issue 5 for $0.35 cents to sample it. Um, I didn't even know this came out, so I got to back up and get it. I don't know how many issues. Four or four. And it turns out they had Eric Powell Goon stories in the back. But uh, this is Billy the Kid's Old Time Oddities. Uh, Ghastly Fiend of London. Looks like it's the Elephant Man and some little boy. So we'll see what that is. I didn't even know that one came out, so I gotta go find the other three. And then the whole reason I went back is these are all BPRD. BPRD is of course the bureau that Hellboy worked for, and these were in this is you know in McNola's Hellboy universe, and it went all to hell because when Hellboy left the BPRD, Abe Sapien and all these guys, all these characters that popped up in the Hellboy series and everything had to fight these things without Hellboy so you get to see what it's like without Hellboy you see it with Hellboy and then it turns into without Hellboy uh, BPRD these are in no 
I don't even know if they're going to show up because these covers are so dark. So let's get up there. Uh, they're a series of mini series, but there are over a hundred of them now. Uh, the warning, yeah, the warning. A lot of these are Magnola covers. Magnola probably plots these out, writes some of them. He's involved in uh, overseeing this universe they have. Yeah, some good, great covers there. You can just kind of study his covers. Yeah, if you can make it out. Lots of monsters. Monster Johnson. I might already have this. Iron, Iron Promethean, but it's, it's alright. It's alright. I got some double. There's a double there, actually. You know, buying 30 cents. So, Lobster Johnson is a very cool pulp hero that he's incorporated into it. Universal Machine. It seems like I had this. I don't know. I might have bought a bunch of doubles, but they're 30 cents a pop. Yeah, Universal Machine. War on Frogs Part 2. Some John Severin art there. You uh, older guys should know who John Severin is. The Black Goddess. Guy Davis, some great Guy Davis art. Guy Davis, uh, for me, was famous on the Sandman Mystery Theater uh, back in the 90s, telling stories of the Golden Age Sandman. Yep, some Age Saving the Drowning. Really excited to read about this. Who is Abe Sapien? Why do the war, where do the frogs and where frogs worship them? I don't know if that's answered in this or not. Garden of Souls. Some great, great stuff. Can't wait to dive into them. And yeah, I'm missing an, an issue here or there, but you know, if they're, if they're well done well enough, I can track them down, I'm sure. All right. 1946. Nothing like a creepy little girl. With big blue eyes behind her. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks a lot for hanging out. Hope everybody had a good Christmas.